In this video, I pit the ever popular DJI Mini 2 with its OcuSync 2.0 connection against the newly released Autel Evo Nano Plus with its Autel Skylink connection in an urban signal test to see which one of these two drones comes out on top. Spoiler alert, make sure you watch to the end because one of these two drones does incredibly badly. When DJI launched this at the Mavic Mini, it was a complete game changer. Sub 249, decent camera, absolutely great quality, but with one huge flaw its connection. Using traditional 2.4 and 5.8 GHz frequencies, or Wi-Fi frequencies if you wish, this drone was absolutely terrible for poor connections and suffered disconnections a hell of a lot, basically meaning that whilst it was incredibly capable, many people just got basically fed up with the signal quality. Now I did various videos on this drone and how you can increase range using, of course, range extenders, etc, etc, but of course it still wasn't absolutely perfect. So following on from the DJI Mavic Mini, DJI gave us this. This is the DJI Mini 2 and the chances are if you're watching this video, you're probably going to have one of these already or at least thinking about buying one. Armed with a stronger output for the signal connection and OcuSync 2.0, DJI's leading connection system, this basically meant that all of the problems found on the DJI Mavic Mini were pretty much gone. To this day, many of you are more than happy worldwide with the signal quality that this actually gives. However, of course, as I've just mentioned, there is a newcomer in town. And that newcomer is this. This is the Autel Evo Nano Plus. Now, Autel have developed a similar system to what DJI have with their OcuSync, only Autel call it Skylink. And basically, whilst this drone promises a very similar uh, actual signal strength and distance, uh, or range if you wish, to the DJI Mini 2, what we actually get with this one is a 2.7k feedback to your flying device whether it be iPad, phone, uh, whatever it is. Now whilst yeah that's all well and nice at the end of the day that's just the feedback to your device. What we're looking at in this video is actually how good this actually performs against of course the leading sort of king really the DJI Mini 2 in what I would call an complete concrete jungle. So I have taken both of these drones, the DJI Mini 2 and the Autel Evo Nano, up in an extremely urban environment full of interference and signals that could actually disrupt the signal and connection. And I'm going to see which one of these actually performs best. And like I've just mentioned in the intro guys, one of these performed incredibly badly. So please do consider right at this moment in time, leaving your prediction in the comment section below as to which one you think will actually perform the best. And well, let's find out. So as you can see guys, my original plan was to actually do a flight with both of these back to back split screen so you could compare directly on the screen at the exact same time. Sadly, due to various circumstances with which you're going to see shortly, it wasn't actually entirely possible. So the Autel feed is on the top, the DJI Mini 2 feed is on the bottom. Now this isn't something I would normally do in terms of a test, I wouldn't normally fly in these circumstances, but I felt it was sufficient and needed to do this test. So as you can see, we have now got the home point has been refreshed, updated on the Autel. Sadly, we are still awaiting any sort of satellite lock on the DJI Mini 2, so I've decided to just start the flight with the Autel, put the drone up in the air, and let's just see what happens with the signal, and then I'll run the DJI Mini 2 as a separate feed. So as you can see, this is an incredibly you know, high interference area, so we're going to pop that gimbal down to and just take a flight out. Now if we look at the top of the screen, we have got two bars. One of them shows GPS and the top one shows the signal strength to the controller. So as we're flying along then, you can see we are pointing the drone, uh, pointing the controller at the drone and just stopping here because I can see that there's a car crossing and I don't want to put anybody in danger. So let's wait and then let's just quickly hop across. As you can see, I would describe this as a concrete jungle um, where we've just got constant houses and very high interference areas as well. Uh, just keeping out the weight of this van here. Um, and, uh, just entering this little green space as you can see where there is plenty of people walking so we want to try and avoid flying overhead of them okay so we're going to take a little left hand turn here 
and go over this bit here. Now what I want to do is just keep it slightly to the left so I'm not overhead with anybody. And even though, as you can see, we're only around 316 meters out uh, in terms of physical distance, the reason why I have done that is because this is a really nice, easy, simple circuit I can follow with this drone. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to just take a little left turn again, simply because I know this area, and of course it is so much going to be so much easier really, um, just to keep my bearings and you know make sure that I know exactly where I am and uh, yeah so flying over this road then you can see there is no cars so we're just going to quickly hop across there you can see we're picking up sort of a good 10 meters per second so we're not going very slowly keeping over the top of the houses just to avoid anybody sitting in any gardens or anything like that now just pay a little attention to the compass on the left hand side um, because that's going to be quite relevant in this uh, when, when we go to the end of this video so coming back then again we are over this little green space but of course you know there is plenty of actual uh, interference here and um, just moving slightly left to avoid these walking here don't want to go overhead and of course moving left again to get out of the way of this car and that is pretty much the end of the circuit um, we are back pretty much to our home point of course I've got eyes on the drone so let's finish the auto run there and then let's start with the DJI Mini 2. So this is the flight with the DJI Mini 2 and if you're wondering as to why I actually decided to go it alone with the auto on its first flight it's very simply because even though I wanted to, to do a split screen so you could see in real time a, you know a comparison side by side the real issue is whilst the auto managed to pick up enough satellites to set the home point within 32 seconds we didn't actually get a, a full satellite lock which you're going to see coming up in a few seconds until one minute and 32 seconds on the dji mini 2. Okay, there we go we finally got that in so sadly guys even i wanted to do it i was just waiting too long so okay. i thought right i'm just going to split this up so if we're heading up then one of the first things you're going to be able to see um even though it's just a live video feedback um, onto the uh, screen it's just basically how much better the auto dealt with the mist um, I think it sort of did a, a fair bit of a fair job and as you can see on both flights we stuck to that 30 meter height 30 meters was enough so I could keep my eyes on the drone um, but also low enough so we are very much within that interference uh, threshold so we are picking up the f interference from the houses which is really what we wanted and this is the whole point of the test to see which one can actually deal with the interference the best and so far as you can see the DJI Mini 2 is doing absolutely fine we're just getting to the same position where we was before where we're going to take this left hand turn and then even though you can see I'm pointing the controller directly towards the drone we get this aircraft signal interference we're getting some RC drops we're getting some stuttering okay and it basically means that sadly you can see I'm unfortunately flying other people because I don't have enough control to be able to keep it closer to where I want it and then as you can see with that weak signal interference adjust antennas and then we have got a complete blackout and a complete return to home situation absolutely not brilliant considering that auto managed to do an absolutely full run all over and you can see you know as a signal comes back let's just look at the compass in the bottom corner obviously we, we're getting telemetry um the drone's raising to its uh, return to home height it's coming towards us we still have a frozen video feed but you can see using the compass in the left hand corner that i am actually pointing the the controller towards the drone so i'm doing everything i can to keep the signal but sadly we had that black video feed uh or we had that signal break up and a full return to home situation so yeah as you can see i'm just checking yeah we're on dual band um you know i've done everything i can i've left the drone runs on auto of course with the auto you can't actually change anything but ultimately guys let's just land the DJI Mini 2 cut back to the studio and then of course we'll discuss the results in more detail Right, so it's time to discuss the results and firstly you would have noticed that just how much quicker I was able to put the auto up in the air due to it obtaining a satellite lock almost instantly. Whilst this came in at 31 seconds, this took a minute and 32 seconds before we had enough satellites locked in before we got the home point updated message. So that's another one to the auto. Secondly, if you did notice on the flight at one point I was caught watching the drone up in the air, not really paying attention. And what actually I was doing, it was pointing the controller towards the direction of the 
original flight, whilst the drone was around 90 degrees to my left. So even though I wasn't pointing the controller towards the actual drone at that point, it still managed to keep an absolutely awesome signal. And of course, you know, on the same flight for the DJI Mini 2, you would see that even though we got that full disconnection and failsafe return to home, you could see at all points, I was actually pointing the controller towards the drone by looking at the compass in the bottom left corner. So incredibly disappointed on the DJI Mini 2. So I want to take a quick look at why and offer my explanation as to why this might have actually happened. Now, if we put these specifications on screen, both the Autel Evo Nano and the DJI Mini 2 are both covering the same 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi frequencies. However, by looking at the specifications, you can see that the Autel is actually pushing out a little bit more broadcasting power than the DJI Mini 2. Now, one thing that I have to note is if you look back at the Autel specifications, there is a third set of frequency numbers um, and this basically is where I think that the Autel could be coming up trumps. At the end of the day, if the Autel is actually operating on that third set of frequencies in between the traditional 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz frequencies given off by your home Wi-Fi, for example, that could easily explain why the Autel was able to perform so well because it won't be as affected by interference as what the DJI Mini 2 and its Ocusync connection would be. So in summary then, whilst the DJI Mini 2 might be an absolutely fantastic drone, on this test anyway, it certainly failed to impress. Now I have had a few rumours and murmurings and comments from you guys saying that after the latest firmware update on the DJI Mini 2 that you have suffered a poorer connection than what you was used to. Now I'm not going to comment on that but what I will say is in this test anyway it is certainly that this DJI Mini 2 didn't even remotely come close to this Autel Evo Nano. So if you are looking for an ultimate drone uh, to fly in an urban area confident of a rock solid connection, well I'll say no more. See you again soon.